all three of their bands? Or at Maybe least the same two or two? three bands? We'll see, yes. Definitely going to be at least two bands taken away for Build the Wall again. Uh, as we can see, the Lee Sin band, of course, coming out once again, like it did in Game 1. Dullahan being a Lee Sin main. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Still maintaining that band. Makes sense. See, interestingly and, uh, we... enough, in this meta, where there are so many broken champions, not having three, you know, not having enough bands for a whole series might actually be hit an advantageous thing, you know? Galio ban, uh, interesting pick. Uh, Galio has seen a nominal amount of play in the last few weeks since his rework. Pretty strong with the damage reduction, of course, having a mini kind of uh, stand united like Shen, being able to come in, disrupt team fights, uh, attack corridors, having his AoE taunt, uh, knock up, got some decent disruption, I'd say in a way kind of some weird budget hybrid between Shen and Nautilus, pretty decent right now in the current meta. But uh, with the tank update that just came out, the items that he usually builds in the top lane are less than optimal. Yeah, I mean, actually, I've only seen him support or jungle. I have not not actually seen him uh. his top lane yet, so we'll have to see. Uh, I mean, we, we won't be seeing him this game at all, regardless. And it looks like uh, Build the Wall will still have one band to go, and they still go with that Ivor, not letting JLC plays right. pick that just yet. Let's now that Zyra band was definitely a target band towards the... Yuli brought in support swipe more. Swipe more with a large majority of his games played on Zyra, and he does, in fact, as you mentioned before, also play the Galio support as his backup support. Oh. So both that Galio and that Zyra are going to be target banned specifically for the substitute support that just came in. Interesting. And I, you know what? I have seen Brando Calrissian on the Rumble as well before, so he's a. Uh... Somewhat comfortable on that champion. It seems like he'll be picking that up. For As I mentioned, game. in a lot of regions in the competitive scene, Rumble has been heralded as the perfect line pick top lane. It's considered decent in tanks and carries. He's of course got a lot of potency, even without items with his ultimate. His build paths are regularly cheap, and his TP plays are decent as well. Uh, picking up the Zonias early on in the game also maintains uh, the ability to being able to TP in the middle of the team and not immediately dying. There's just a lot of flexibility for the Rumble. The only downside, of course, being that he is a magic damage dealer, which might kind of shoehorn the middle and jungle lane if they don't want to wind up with a full AP composition. Indeed. Well, this time we do have Ari and Lulu being picked up. Ari last game was banned by Thunderbirds. So we will be seeing Azir as a Plunky on this champion, more likely than not, and Lulu, a repeat pick for Build the Wall, although their support is obviously new. Looks like they will be, you know, slotting that champion back into their comp. So, interestingly enough. Not the Twisted Fate, though, that we saw in Game 1. Right. From Kekko. Uh, Probably not this time around as the Choga. Ari. Ari, we need to remember also Ari was banned last game. Uh, considered, right, like I said before, kind of the well rounded, all around mid lane pick. Uh, insanely high win rate for her pick rate. She can, she has a lot of flexibility in the builds. Uh, Gunblade, of course, pretty strong on her and was untouched in the most recent patch. Very good uh, blind picking into basically every matchup right now. Good into assassins, good into mages. Very mobile, good at uh, making picks, making plays, team fighting. Basically, it does a little bit of everything. Very solid blind pick. Of course, the Lulu picked up as well. Lulu still considered a staple of the bottom lane. Kind of has a situation for every occasion at every stage of the game. Pretty strong pickup. See that JLC has picked. His inexperienced Rek'Sai definitely has never played Rek'Sai before. Yeah, just honestly, Absolutely. this actually really shocks me. I'm a, I am appalled 
that JLC plays would bring out Rek'Sai with zero games played in any season. Yeah. Never played the champion before. I don't I don't think JLC even actually owns Rek'Sai. Surprised he could still pick, pick this champion. Yeah, I think this uh, is actually an error in the client. And honestly, uh, uh, an error in his brain bug. as well. Yeah. An error in his team. Um, <laughs> he's just going to okay. int. All running right. it down mid. All right, all right. And uh, we see the, Bl the Blanc pickup afterwards. Uh, also a typical Gunblade user right now in the current meta, considered very strong, uh, decent matchup into the RE, kind of a uh, kill matchup in the middle lane. So pretty standard. Well, we'll see what no summoner spells they decide to take. the dash, does it? Charm isn't right, going to stop right. the W damage from Distortion, so LeBlanc has a little bit of an edge, but we have a Nasus. We didn't talk but about the dog. at the same the time, yeah. yeah. Woof. At the same time, you need to remember the wave there was also nerfed on LeBlanc, so the Q start is much more natural, or the, the Q max is a much more natural uh, ability path for her. Right. So it'll be interesting to see comes out on top in the mid lane. And like you mentioned, yes, we do in fact have a Nasus in the top lane. Very interesting pick. Uh, something we can talk about, obviously, later on in the champion select. Uh, we can get into that specifically, how he does into the Rumble matchup. Uh, I'm, I'm interested to see how that's going to be played out, especially with early jungle pressure, perhaps. And that basically confirms we're going to be getting a Gragas in the jungle. Unless, of course, we go full Season 2, and that's a Nasus jungle bringing out the old Odd One strat. And I really hope it isn't, otherwise this is going to be a very short game, too. Oh, uh, well, it doesn't matter because it's a placeholder. Oh, it's a placeholder Nasus. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Okay. Uh, so that's a placeholder Nasus. Uh, I'd like to eventually know what the placeholder is supposed to be. Eventually, we uh, may know. So, oh, okay. And, and we, we may will... not know. <laughs> so, uh, in the bottom lane, we do know the bottom lane Nasus is a, as a placeholder because Nara has been picked up instead in the top lane. And Nara into Rumble, we can talk about a little bit more. Nara into Rumble is something that has traditionally in the last couple of years been a top lane matchup that's a little volatile. Uh, during the peaks of Nara's play, would have, of course, basically a full AD build. He'd have the Hex Drinker, the Black Cleaver, Okay, Nasus is supposed to be Nautilus, no. being told oh. right now, okay. and Nar is supposed to be Caitlyn. Yeah, they should really use more troll ban or more troll picks for their placeholders because I just finished talking about that. All right, whatever. Let's get back. Uh, well, listen, somebody right, so in Twitch chat just told me it was Ramus instead of Nasus, so I was a little more confused than you were. I All right, I hate these placeholder. Dude, why don't they just tell us? Uh, anyway. Caitlyn in the bottom lane. It's Caitlyn Lulu versus Lucian uh, Karma. So these are the traditional bot lane ADCs during the last patch. They were considered the top two in solo queue. Ash was kind of hanging on the, the edge of the S tier, right? Uh, Ash, of course, being played last game. But this game, we're going to be seeing the Caitlyn Lulu versus the Lucian Karma. These are pretty even matchups, I would say. Uh, if either gets ahead in that bottom lane, you can expect it to swing in their favor. Uh, uh, and on a very level ground, I would assume that the Caitlyn Lulu is definitely more aggressive. But if there's any uh, gaps in the armor, you can definitely assume the Lucian with the Karma Shield behind him is definitely going to be rushing and aggressively trying to get those the better of those trades. So that's kind of a volatile bot lane. You can swing either way depending on how the early levels go. The top lane now, we can discuss the real top lane matchup, which is the Rumble versus the Nautilus. And uh, that is basically a free matchup. Rumble is given typically free reign of the entire the entire uh, laning phase. He deals some decent damage early on. Of course, he has the, the Harpoons, the E, very early on, and those help assist for ganks. They have a very potent slow with them. And it's just Rumble is going to have a very fun time in the top lane. Nautilus is not going to do much to him on his own. Of course, there's the possibility that Nautilus might mess him up with a gank from the jungle Gragas. But other than that, uh, we can expect Rumble to be getting a very early CS lead in the mid lane. As we spoke before, we have the LeBlanc versus the Ari, kind of volatile as well, kind of a skill matchup. Interested to see how that really goes. So overall, best uh, case scenario uh, the, the the most uh, 
likely scenario for these two teams is that the junglers will be dictating a lot of how this early game goes. All three lanes are a little bit volatile. Nautilus expected to lose that lane, but at the same time has a lot of CC with which he can assist Gragas early on. Uh, in the mid lane, very skill matchup heavy. Both these uh, have, have a lot of damage they can output. Uh, a lot of opportunities to set up ganks for their junglers. Very mobile, very easy for them to roam to other lanes even before they hit six. And in the bottom lane, uh, very, very, uh, a lot of focus on those first few levels pre six on whether or not Caitlyn and Lulu can put enough oppressive uh, cover early on in the game to maybe get an early CS advantage. Do we have sponsors? Uh, you want to make some sponsors? Well, I was just going to start yelling about a product, and then I realized it's probably not a good idea to... Oh, do you think we can get a Discord sponsor like everyone else? Oh, sure. I wasn't going to yell about that, though. Uh, I'll yell about Discord. Uh, you want me to yell yeah, about Discord? Uh, uh, I mean, I've literally gone over the whole champ select of how long it took him to do the whole placeholder stuff, so... I have, like, nothing else to say. Hey, um, guys! Why don't you join oh our Discord on Ascension oh. Esports? I don't know the link, but you can find it on Twitter.com forward slash AESports underscore GG. And Dave is a sponsor, so shout out to Dave. I think that's how you say your name. I don't know. We didn't get any information on you okay. from our sponsor card, but here we that. go! It's Dave in the Twitch chat. He's a sponsor of the show. You can uh, go to his Twitch channel and uh, follow him and then unfollow him and laugh. And blame me. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, all right. So my microphone wasn't ready for that, but that's okay. At least we managed to fill the little bit of extra gap in the time. Absolutely. Uh, well, we now we've got about three summoner more spells. Minutes, so talk about summoner nice. spells. Go okay. Summoner spells ignite for both mid laners. That's something that I was actually going to touch on once we saw those locked in. Uh, most of them in the past have taken teleport. LeBlanc a little more common. Uh, do we, of course, how could we forget Nick Cage? Nick Cage sponsors us, dude. Anyway, uh, LeBlanc has been taking teleport recently, as since she's being played more in the one-three-one style, right? The split push style with the gunblade, with the Lich Bane, taking down towers, slowly chipping them away. Teleport has been a very popular summoner spell as of late. Arya has also, in the past, it's more of a North American thing in the competitive scene. But Teleport has also been used by the RA. Exhaust is very popular as well. But with these Ignites in the mid lane, this uh, definitely spices up the matchup a lot. Because with Ignite, it enables both mid laners to, if they land their full combo, finish off their opponent with an Ignite, maybe get a couple solo kills. So we can expect mid lane to definitely be a little more uh, skirmish heavy than we might have expected ori originally. Uh, and uh, bottom lane, of course, we have the standard exhaust for both exhaust was nerfed a few patches ago but it seems to still be a popular summoner spell for most supports not very many supports opting for the ignite which was untouched for quite a while now uh, in a, a minute and a half we'll be able to see what these masteries these keystones might be for both players both teams uh, i expect however to be pretty standard of course courage of the colossus for both the Nautilus and the Gragas, uh, probably for the Rek'Sai as well, because that Burrow is a very, uh, that Unburrow is a very reliable tool to proc the Courage of the Colossus in team fights. The Flash on Burrow is a favorite by many Rek'Sai players. The possibility of maybe a Fervor for Battle is also available. Of course, Deathfire Touch for the top lane Rumble really synergizes well with the Leandres and with the Equalizer. Uh, a lot of dot damage. Uh, the, the Flame Spitter as well just. Lots of dot damage, lots of extra few ticks of damage to really make sure you uh, deal the maximum amount of damage. Uh, in the mid lane, we can expect to have Thunderlords for both the kind of mage assassin hybrids that two Gunblade users will have in the mid lane. Of course, the Gunblade active does help proc the Thunderlords if you need one extra uh, uh, third for your, your passive. Um... For the Lucian and the Caitlyn, typically the standards for both, uh, you've had the Fervor for the Lucian, the Warlords for the Caitlyn. Of course, that could also be changed as well.
It definitely could change. We did see Ash actually running Warlords instead of Fervor, which is a little right. puzzling given that uh, typically you see my screen go black because and, it starts loading. You typically and you it see looks the like... Fervor because it has the, what's it called? The Runons. Caitlyn also builds that, but needs the Warlords, I think, a little bit more. Thanks for that little tidbit, uh, a little piece of advice to check the op.gg. It looks like it's going to be the other way around. Uh, Lucian has opted for the Warlords, what? and Caitlyn has opted for the Fervor of Battle. So this is different. This is not necessarily the standard that we see these two AD carries using, uh, typically. But I can try and reason out why that might happen. Oh, one last thing, of course, the Windspeaker's Blessing for, uh, Windspeaker's Blessing for both supports in the bottom lane. Of course, Lulu and Karma in recent times have been opting to max their E first in most situations, both because uh, the, the bases are pretty high and also because they enable the ADCs to uh, to have more playmaking overall in their kit, both getting increased movement speed or uh, in, in Karma's case, or that, that picks on hit effect with Lulu. Uh, so now we can talk about how these matchups might be going. Now, assuming that these AD carries did choose the correct masteries, the masteries they meant to choose, uh, Caitlyn may be taking the fervor of battle specifically for laning. Now, that may sound strange considering Warlord's healing is especially valued early on in the lane to give you a little bit of extra sustain, but Caitlyn may be assuming that with this Lulu paired with her, she'll be able to have a lot of oppressive uh, plays early on in the game. Getting that picks on top of her, even as early as level 1, adds a lot of extra damage when coupled with her range means that she could definitely possibly get a lot of extra poke early on on the Lucian. And on the other side, Lucian, assuming that Caitlyn Lulu will be a pretty difficult lane to overcome in the laning phase, may be taking this Warlords to add a little bit of extra survivability, maybe starting the Longsword as well with some pots, trying to survive the early laning so he can hit that first item power spike. I mean, Warlords is essentially a couple extra potions in lane, but it does seem a little... I, I guess I can see Warlords on Lucian. I mean, it's not as bad as it would have been like last game for Build the Wall where Lucian was their entire team. Right. Uh, this time they have the Rumble, they have the LeBlanc, and, you know, they're going to have some small ambient damage come out of Karma and Rek'Sai. So th they'll have some damage anyways. You know, Thunderbirds will have... Some damage, regardless, as we are right. just about to get into game now, so we can and, finally see what happens. And uh, I can take this extra time as the game is starting up to talk about maybe the common win conditions that we can see for both teams available. Uh, in Thunderbird's case, where you, like you said, the Rumble, the LeBlanc, Lucian, that's uh, a lot of team fighting, a lot of 5v5ing. They want to be skirmishing. You want to have the Karma give the Mantra shield start off the fight give an aoe shield and movement speed buff to the entire team you have the rex eye coming in go for the tunnel to uh, to flash on burrow maybe catch a target out uh you have, of course have the rumble ulti very good in choke points very good uh, river fights for the dragon for the baron in choke points where you have controlled vision um and then on the side of build the wall you have a more traditional composition. Of course, you brought the Lulu with the Hyper Carry, the six-item late-game monster, the Caitlyn, early on oppression in the laning phase, and then later on scaling, right? In the meantime, you have the Ari, you have the Gragas, you have the Nautilus. These are three champions that are very good at getting picks. You can have the Flash Body Slam, the Flash Charm, the Nautilus Hook, the, the Depth Charge. Just a lot of tools with which they can potentially catch out a target. Uh, of course, LeBlanc and Lucian considered very mobile, but Rek'Sai, Rumble, those are very linear, linear in their paths. You know where they're going. Rumble has no mobility on his own. Forced to basically juke if he's caught out. You have the Rek'Sai that has to follow in a straight path, especially when Burrowed, uh, not a lot of vision she can actually obtain on her own. So with this kind of composition, you do want... Uh, if you're going to be fighting in the mid game for build the wall, you want to be going for picks. You don't want to be going for those 5v5 fights because unless you can get fantastic zoning control with the Nautilus and the Gragas, you're typically going to lose those. You're going to lose to the extra mobility, to the AOE damage that's possible. 
Here's something that's a little puzzling. Delahan, last game, started blue. This game, starting blue. We know it's not a... If he favors getting a stronger leaf from his bottom lane, because last game he was uh, blue side and started blue buff. This time, he's. it looks like maybe he's just avoiding going for Raptors at all. Obviously, Rek'Sai is a pretty strong level 1, but Gragas, if you start Q, you can do a lot of ambient damage to all of the barrels, or all of the, all the barrels, all of the Raptors, and then, of course, Ari can throw the Orb of Deception out to, you know, give it a little bit more damage on top of the barrel roll. So I feel like that's a bit of a misplay or a misallocation of resources there. It's... It's definitely the safest choice possible. As we saw in the game before, we saw the Gragas with the Raptor start. Though he could clear the Raptors very quickly, could not clear the red very quickly. Red, of course, if you can get rid of the smaller Raptors early on, red buff does in fact deal the most damage to you overall as a camp. And uh, a Gragas trying to solo that at level 2, perhaps he feels that the trade-off in health, the trade-off in time necessary to devote to that red buff was not worth it. And so instead, mm. opting for the blue side. But as you said, what it does do is it ensures that the Lulu Caitlyn dual lane will not be able to get the early get get the early push because they'll be late to lane, right? So they won't be able to control the wave nearly as much as they they may like. They did in the end manage to arrive at the same time as the bottom lane, however, because Lucian and Karma were helping with the wraiths on the other side, the the Raptors actually. Right. So wraiths are uh, long gone, right? Yeah been there hasn't it been like since season four or something it feels like it was i don't know man i miss years. rates i miss the old actually thinking about it i miss the old summoner's rift but it looks like delahan's not missing his body yeah, we're having a 1v1 in the jungle yeah it's a little early on i'm not so sure that this is what the doctor ordered for the fat man but gragas is gonna walk away with a pretty worse for wear after that trade and there was some aggression from the mid lane as well as uh, Kekal actually tried to stop Plunky from getting too far to, into the red side territory there. And I, I like that a lot. Assuming uh, assuming that Gragas does not perfectly disrupt the tunnel with his body slam on uh, JLC, well, this this early Rek'Sai side roam into the into the uh, jungle helps keep vision of where the, the Gragas might be. He typically winds up winning those fights after all the abilities are used, and he also manages to make the quick escape on the Blast Cone, not even having to use his tunnel. And uh, he wound up not only getting a good trade onto the Gragas, you know, making him use a little bit more resources. Uh oh, might have a fight down here. We very well may. Distortion already on cooldown. That is oh, going to be a flash out of Kekko, but that will be first blood picked up by Plunky. Flashing forward with the Ignite to secure that along with the Foxfire. That was two flashes for one, but I would still say hashtag worth, just like free. That was a pretty, that was, that was a pretty cheeky charm. Uh, Funky did try to predict LeBlanc going back going back on her distortion at that exact moment. A little bit missed time there, but overall they still managed to secure the kill. Some good pathing by Delahan. Uh, most junglers would assume that Gragas would be backing after taking so much damage but because he had started that blue start he had just now gotten the red that was a lot of extra sustain right he gets health regen from the red buff it means that he's healthy enough to gank mid without worrying about it indeed he is we saw that wound up uh making kekel a lot worse for wear even cs but down a kill especially down first blood that's a lot of gold that's gone the way of your lane opponent and now Plunky will have the advantage. We'll look towards him to set Ooh, this up. Ooh, a nice up. gank in return. Indeed. Flashing over the wreck side, but JLC plays remain borrowed. We'll flash on borrow for a quick kill onto C9 Ray Ayanami anime name. And Dud is online. We'll Stay Ray. become a little bit further ahead as well. Yeah, that, that's C9 Ray. Um, somehow decided after losing the NALCS finals, spoiler alert, uh, decided to retire and join the Ascension Dragon League instead as an ADC. Wait, Ray is one of their players? C9 Ray. Other Ray. Ah, oh, the other Ray. The other Ray. That explains his, his, the anime name. His, his not well known brother. Yeah. Well, we, we can understand why he's not so well known after that play. <laughs> oh! Um. And that is the pretty standard JLC gank, as we've seen in previous matches from his Rek'Sai. He really does like doing that behind-the-tower tunnel. Yeah, never. Uh, that behind-the-tower play, right? Uh, it, w it was a good flash initially by the Caitlyn. 
uh, assuming that the Unburrow were to come out. But JLC uh, played very smartly in that gank, holding on to his un or his her whatever Unburrow uh, until the flash had been blown, knowing that once the net was gone, there was no way Caitlyn was going to be able to escape easily. Very nice patience-wise. Uh, and it secured the kill, only winding up burning his flash for the ADC summoners. And now that Caitlyn's summoners are burned and she's now behind in the lane, that's something that Karma and Lucian can definitely take advantage of. If you are just joining us, even though this is the second game these two teams have played after some um, shenanigans with regards to the rosters, we have reset to a 0-0. Potentially 1-0 in favor of Thunderbirds as a result, but... We'll st we're still sort of pending some uh, admin deliberation. By the end of this game, we'll definitely be able to chime in on a potential ruling. Right, exactly what the ruling was. This is a good uh, use of the explosive cask. However, the karma speed up and the relentless pursuit making it pretty difficult to uh, intercept Thunderbird's bottom lane here. And knowing that cooldown is offline, they can play a little bit more far forward, but... They don't want to just yet, because, of course, Gragas was just clearing wards in the tri brush. Let's we'll see. I mean, gold is equalized so, now at this point, despite the first blood going in favor of the Ari. Something interesting is, with no jungle pressure in the top lane yet, Nautilus has still managed to find himself even in CS in the top lane. Uh, I'm assuming that corrupting potion start, uh, helping him a lot, actually backing still with another stack available to him so this shows that nautilus has been doing a very good job holding his own so far in this lane uh not really getting pushed back too much by what is normally a very oppressive lane matchup and now that he has the specters cal completed this is just going to become an easier job for him that is true although you have to still give deference to the rumble who has already picked up the spell pen from the haunting guys no doubt looking to go back with about 1100 gold for his spell pen boots as well the sorcerer shoes that's going to be a hard hitting equalizer flame spitter whatever he may throw at you it's probably going to hurt a little bit even through all of your magic resist and no noting uh, worth noting as well is that the rest of the team on the side of build the wall has no magic resist yet so this rumble will hit like a truck if allowed to continue to free farm and that's basically all you you have to allow them to do that if you're a tank right you can't really stake a claim to, for lane dominance uh oh oh heckle just used the ultimate there is going to be able to distort out there but a good explosive cast coming out from delahan knocks him straight towards his jlc plays he throws out a pre-seeker and says get your hands off my girl fat man yeah, I'm, I'm surprised that they didn't chain the CC correctly there. Gragas did land the body slam despite LeBlanc being very mobile, and uh, Blunky just didn't line up the charm correctly in time with that. We see here now, uh, looks like JLC might be going for a gank in the bottom lane again, a repeated gank, but Lulu's level 6 now. I don't see much coming from this. Uh oh, it might be a solo kill in the mid lane. There could no be. Oh, Ignite did not come out. Would have done the deal there. Uh, hmm. Flash was available. Definitely... Uh, Plunky needs to get out of there as soon as possible. Crowd control coming up from both junglers, but now uh -oh. Delahan's in enemy territory, and his body slam is not on off the cooldown fast enough to save him from flashing. He will flash over that wall as the culling comes out from Dud is online, who has finished his cutlass. He's already hitting pretty hard right now, especially on the not so tanky Gragas, who just went Moby Boots first item. Similar build actually to what the Delahan built on Elise last match. Right, I do want to... Uh-oh. Well, is this a solo kill? This could very well be, but it looks like Brando is not going to be forced to flash. We'll just okay. sustain off of the refillable pot and back away for now. So, yes, I, I was about to point that out. We do see that the first backs for these junglers is something indicative of the game beforehand. As I pointed out, the Elise with the Moby boots and Smite Stone last game, now we see a, Le uh, a uh, Gragas, same idea. Moby's, Smite, Smite Stone, first things you buy. Even gets an Aether Wisp instead of double uh, amplifying tome, just increasing the mobility that you might have. And uh, that's that, that's indicative of something like a, a farm heavy style, right? And meanwhile, you have the Tiamat start for Rek'Sai. That's something that you'd build if you plan on farming hard, if you want to clear waves, things like that. It, it's something standard, of course, for many Rek'Sai players, but it's still a uh, something indicative of a style difference style change of course 
And we did see that uh, as that Cloud Drake falls to JLC plays and Thunderbirds secure the first Elemental Drake of the game in this game one and a half of uh, this best of five. Uh, the next and one will be Infernal. So definitely going to be a fighting point, I think. Something minor to point out is as well, if you look at the map, the mini map, you can see that uh, Build the Wall has actually managed to ward both sides of the river yet. Uh, JLC was perfectly fine sneaking that dragon by instead sneaking over the wall with the tunnel and uh, being able to take it with the pink ward placed over where the scuttle might be. And uh, that that basically ensured that even though the bot lane and the mid lane were still in their lanes not backing, uh, that, that dragon was able to be snuck with just a little bit of help from the eSport. Yeah, they had bot lane priority like you mentioned, so that definitely was... Uh... Easy take for JLC, who now finds himself maybe setting up a 2v2 versus the top and jungle of Build the Wall. But it looks like it's just to be some a little bit of posturing. As some more vision control is secured by Thunderbirds' Ooh, nice dodge. bottom and mid lane players. Azir is a plunky. Oh my. Actually getting flashed on. And the ignite. Ooh, the plays the coming out from the place. Prey Seeker there. Probably would have been enough without him, but, you know, split the gold a little bit. It, it is more load. overall gold when you get an assist uh, for your team. Right, so right. There is an um, argument to be made, I suppose. But. And after those summoner spells had been committed, Ari should have known that she needed to get the hell out of there, but instead she opted to keep her flash and instead... Uh oh well, Another fight. Delahan might have bitten off more than he can chew. But the good cast come out to split off the mid laner from the jungler on the side of Thunderbirds. Teleports have completed, and the top lanes for both players, both teams rather, are in the area ready to fight. But it doesn't look like anything's going to break out just yet. No Drake to be taken, so this may have been a just mid pressure oh, I like this. This smart. coming out from that. Thunderbirds. That's, that's two waves worth in the mid lane. They can start pushing that up right now. They sure can. Good Orb of Deception from Plunky to try and thin that out, but they're going to have to act sooner rather than later as Rek'Sai shows her face. Oh, Bragas took the blue buff as well. Yeah, didn't... Giving it to the mid laner. Didn't feel uh, confident enough because they had vision on it. Rek'Sai could have walked over and thrown off, thrown a smite off, was up for JLC, so... That is an interesting decision. They knew that the blue buff was not going to be stolen away, but Gragas decides to go for the blue buff first instead of one of the other camps. Be another skirmish coming in. There's the equalizer. And very well, could be. You mentioned the equalizer is very good in these river fights or these enclosed off locations, but it only hits one. It's just a red carpet for Swipe Moore as he makes his debut onto the rift. But nothing more came of it just yet. Kekel trying to get some more pressure in this mid lane. Remember, Plunky had first blood, still wound up getting solo killed there. Or kill secured yeah, by JLC, uh... I suppose. Oh. Well, somehow they knew the Rek'Sai was there, and now JLC plays could be finding himself in a little bit of a between a rock and a hard place there, but Spirit Rush already used all three charges down for Plunky. They could just seed control of this mid lane tower. Delahan's nice not flash. having any of it, oh, though. Man, just to flash and throw the cast down almost gets Brando. If that flash hadn't been up, that would have been two kills picked up by the Delahan jungler by the or rather by the build the wall jungler but Delahan man, still managing the net one that was very clean flashing over the rumble right. to n land that cc onto both players Some that was uh, a very aggressive play wound up working out and in the end wound up even trading flash for flash very worth it uh rex I just flashed in fountain uh he meant to hit r you know, we talked about JLC plays as inexperience. He thought Flash meant ultimate. Yeah. He's just yeah, never you know, played this champ before. You got to give him a when you, when you put JLC on uh, something like Rek'Sai, you know, you just got to expect these kinds of things to happen. Mm. So that's going to be a Flash on Burrow now down for the next four and a half minutes. Uh, not good. Although it is worth noting that Build the Wall probably don't know that that happened. They didn't have right. vision in the fountain. Unless somebody's having some having a toggle, you know. It's a um, term you learned from CSGO, you know, having a toggle. Is Richard Lewis a sponsor of this? this oh, God. <laughs> I, I won't um, continue my sponsor talk for now, don't worry. So, let's go back. Oh, my goodness. Look at that beautiful first item by Nautilus. 
I oh, love it. Adaptive Helm. All right, all right. Oh, I'm excited to talk about this. The Adaptive Helm. This is a very good item. Okay, actually, first let's see what happens in this little skirmish here. Mm, not a whole Getting lot. a little too big for his britches. Uh, 3v3 in the bottom lane now. Hey, it's not much of a 3v3 right now. Ooh, the cask follows him over, but it's just enough to split him off from the rest of his team. Nothing too much more that is going to come That could have ended so much worse with no flash on the wreck side. But, uh... Let's get back to the Adaptive Helm. All right, the Adaptive Helm. For those of you who have not read the patch notes yet, you should read the patch notes. But what this Adaptive Helm is, is it's HP, MR, health regen, and CDR. But the most important thing is the passive effect on this item. This item ensures that every time you take damage from a spell cast, from an effect, from anything like that, all the damage you take from that same cast is reduced by 15%. This means things like the rumble queue. Now, every single tick from the rumble after that deals less damage. Same thing with the Leandri's procs. The same thing with the Deathfire touch. If he gets hit with one harpoon, the next harpoon's gonna deal less damage. The equalizer. This is literally an item designed to counter that rumble. That is very smart pickup. I commend it, and I think it's fantastic. Portrait could use some work, though. No, you're not a fan of the uh, the button art. Uh, the actually a uh, little fun fact, little trivia fact. Well, nothing's going on. The original portrait for the adaptive helm in the PVE was uh, I don't know if you remember this this item. A little bit of throwback. You remember how the Aegis used to build into either locket or a Enchant super Aegis? The, the bulwark, yeah. Runic yes. Bulwark. Uh, runic bulwark. Uh, what they had as the placeholder portrait before they got the art for the adaptive helm was literally a bulwark upside down with a smiley face. <laughs> okay. It was the greatest thing I've ever seen. It's like somebody had flipped a bulwark upside down and drawn a smiley face with Sharpie. Well, you know, that sounds like something I could do. I should get hired to Riot as a graphic designer if that's the case, because I can do that with all the items. Uh, I, I wish they had kept it. It would have been nice, but... Um, yeah. I, I cannot speak highly, uh, more highly, of this adaptive helm. This is a fantastic pickup great item in this situation uh it'll make sure you'll take less damage from the culling uh if you get hit by the q from karma the empowered q the mantra q the circle will do less damage uh rex size q empowered auto attacks maybe it reduces the damage i don't know I'm, I'm really excited to see just how much damage you can actually reduce with this item this is something that i'm really excited to see and looks like what okay interesting barrel he's barreling like himself he needs some booze you know yeah that w blue is enough. going to be is going to be taken away by uh, Rogus again. Yeah, maybe not. Look so at how much little trust. damage it's doing. Maybe not Look so at that. much trust for the for Plunky here. Look at that. That is fantastic. And the fact it gives CDR as well, it's like a spear visage replacement. Yeah, Holy no kidding. Cow. And that's a lot of damage traded back onto Brando Coverskin's Rebel, who will be crowd oh my controlled God, I love twice. It. That is going to be the flash. I force. love it. Just not enough damage dealt back to the this Nautilus. This was supposed to be a hard matchup, but this item changes everything. He's got the Leandris done, and he's barely touching him. No kidding. He's going to need a lot more spell pen before that. He's going to be uh, able to break the brick wall uh, that is the Nautilus. Well, speaking of brick walls, I... Delahan body slammed himself into one and, instead of the enemy Okay, champion. um... I... Is there going to be a pause coming in? A remake? Is his mouse broken, or...? Well, that, yeah, that is the second time it's pointed to the bottom there, right. <laughs> there, there, there may be there may be a little bit of drinking, pre-game drinking going on at their jungler. <laughs> you might want to get him tested after this. Well, we'll have to see. I know when Not I... Not only that, that's a blasting wand in Gragas' inventory. Is he going AP Gragas? He very may, may very well be. Oh my goodness. All right. The plot thickens. The plot does thicken. Oh, once again, barrel missing. Is he dr no, That was actually just out of vision. Yeah. Fine. Fine for now. We'll have to see how, how it changes. Interesting. Early red buff. 21 minutes in. Going over to the it's, Lucian. I guess it's, it's around smart. that time. I, I don't like the Lucian build, however. You went hmm. Blade of the Rune King into Phantom Dancer instead of opting for the Black Cleaver, which is honestly not much more expensive, but... Uh, going for the Phantom Dancer instead, which actually just got a 50 gold nerf on top of everything else. Something kind of minor, but uh, I don't truly understand it. Uh, 
He just it's wants not like to attack really fast. scales with attack speed anymore. Yeah, he wants uh -oh. to attack really fast. Oh, nice fast. cast. Ooh, is it going to nice be a steal? Spike. Dullahan will be able to secure that Infernal Drake. And oh, they very may well the secure the team flag. fight as Cracked Apple misses that flash. JLC plays trying to flash onto Dullahan, but Wild Growth keeps him alive there. Blunky and the Caitlyn also went down in the back half of that fight. Dud is online, flashing forward aggressively, trying to secure the fat man's demise but brando calrissian you've mentioned the adaptive helm on the nautilus but the rest of his team doesn't have it this rumble just got a double kill off of the back of that fight they're gonna make it a triple no jlc plays will steal it away and that means that it's a four four one in favor of thunderbirds they lose the drake but they gain so much more yeah that's going to be middle tower going down right after there's not going to be anybody to stop it in time no, Lucian was able to push out the bottom wave as well. That means that there's going to be more XP and gold lost on the side of Build the Wall as they lose their middle lane, mid lane turret there. And uh, absolute hard carry coming out of the rumble in that fight. Pretty yeah, that's uh, like we mentioned before. Although they lost the dragon, this is a t this is a team composition that likes to five v five skirmish. They want to get down and dirty. They want those chaotic fights because. Every single member of this team can impact it. Besides Karma. Karma kind of helps the rest of them do something. She uh, overall, puts her impact uh, into the rest of her team. Is that two Banshee's Veils? What the hell is going on? Okay, no, there's three Banshee's Veils. That's a Banshee's Veil on Ari, too. Well, it does. This... I actually was corrected by Twitch chat that that does build out of AP items. Now. Right, it, 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 it's 70 AP, so it's a decent amount of AP, but the passive is still garbage. What the hell? 40 really second like cooldown. You can't tell That's these players what is cooldown. and is not garbage, Lovedy. These players love their garbage. They are yeah. the garbage. They are one with the garbage. Especially oh. JLC oh. plays as Rexa. Oh! I see. He should be building a. Yeah, where, where's his Banshee's build? Get, get a Banshee's build. Go on. Pray um. Seeker damage to kill steal some more. Now, assuming that this was. Oh my god! <laughs> Yeah, well, right. there's That's still no AP putting in work. There's still no lack of damage, as uh, C9 anime just found out there on the Caitlyn. Yeah, losing some uh, uh, significant health there, and they're going to be sacking the tower as well. Well, maybe not. Delahan's made his way over here, throwing out both the ultimate from him and the Lulu to try and clear away the. Uh, not even going to be able to stop the push. Oops, but no, it is not going to be able to stop it. JLC plays taken aggro with the Prey Seeker. Oh, Ooh, the red carpet on. No, Sprite more is going, does not have Flash. It will be going down. JLC plays takes a big old chomp out of the Lulu. And now Nautilus roaming up top. That means that it will likely be an end to the top lane push. But look at mid. There's two members there now. Bottom lane as well as the jungler heading down there as well. They, they might be having their eyes on this or maybe the blue buff. What? What are they going for next, do you think? I will concede, assuming that they actually tried to justify these Banshees built for uh, Thunderbirds, uh, assuming that, we can say that they built it because of the Grogus Flash Body Slam, perhaps. Like I said before, uh, Build the Wall do have a composition. They're standing on a ward right now. Do Wait, have can a I composition. ping Missing and Spectator? Hold on. No, it doesn't let me. Uh-oh. Oh, well, I think it's going to have to let me if Keckle keeps that stuff up. But he was able to get... Oh, uh, where's your Banshees? Oh, no. That's Ooh, not a The flash God. from Brando flashes over the bullet. Thank you very much. I'll take that kill, uh, says C9 Ray Anime. Yay. And that will be a bit of a misplay coming out from the top laner of Thunderbirds. But it wouldn't be Dragon League without all a right, little all right, bit of yeah, fiesta. I, I take back what I said. These Banshees are unjustified. They suck. I agree. Banshee still sucks as an item. It's 70 AP, but so is everything else you can buy. Build something else. Yeah, it wasn't 40 seconds since they'd been attacked by an enemy champion. So the uh, Caitlyn Ultimate didn't... Uh, you know, you'd be changing your tune pretty quick if the Caitlyn Ultimate didn't hit Gekko. Well, it got absorbed. Banshee's wasn't even up to block it to begin with. They were standing on a friggin' ward. Oh, okay. Disconnect and pause in the middle of combat. And what else, yep. what else could you ask for? But that's all right. We can fill time. That is our uh, the job of our sponsors, actually. Our sponsors, Dave oh, and Discord. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> JK, JK. Except for Dave. Dave is a sponsor. He pays me Dave one is penny definitely a, a, sponsor. a week or something. Thank you, Dave, for committing to donate to Ascension Esports uh, next season. Uh, we... 
Very yep, much a small loan of a million dollars to Ascension Esports, thanks to Daith. You heard it here for his confirmed, and if he doesn't uh, do it, then he's just, uh, he's worse than Trump. He's a liar and a cheat and will be banned from any further Ascension Esports activities. Okay. Including wow. watching the, the stream, but switch. done it online. Well, he looks like he was just banned from life. At least no, in this game. that's unfortunate. And that will be the Ada Carry going down, but JLC plays and the Rumble are in the bottom half of the map as Dragon is coming up in a minute, 20 seconds here. So they have some time, and we have some lag. Sorry about that. I don't know what that was. And uh, we'll have to see what comes of that death in the mid lane. Doesn't look like too much right now. Ah, see, Banshee's Veil blocks Prey Seeker. It makes perfect sense. Oh, my God. Well, Nautilus is uh, fancying himself a bit of a grab here. He's out. Of, he's out a bit of a grab, mate, and he's he's out of a bit of a grab onto the wreck site. Would you believe it? When did we become EU? I don't want to be EU. You might be saying EU, but I'm I'm saying have a bit of a grab, mate. Brilliant. Oh, we're us. We're us, us, us. Um, you could even call us awesome casters. <laughs> Well, that's uh, it. I'm leaving the team speak. I'm oh, going to be solo casting. See no. you later. Hey, actually, I don't think we haven't talked about is this massive gold lead that's actually occurred. I completely missed this because it's last the game there was. Bills. It is the Banshee's Bells. They're so gold efficient, they've actually created extra gold for uh, Thunderbirds. That's why they have a gold advantage. It's not their you three added towers. GP, adding GP5 to kills. Banshee's was a bad idea. God damn it. You know. Hey, when, family friendly scream. 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 Scream? scream? Don't scream. Don't do that. You already did that once today. Scream? Uh. Well, uh, Azir's Ari's Blunky caught. might be screaming right now. It's the flash out of the chain. Was enough to get him out there. If the Ignite had been on, he would have died. Once again, the second time, actually, this game, Kekal has missed an opportunity to All right, so get a kill with Ignite. I was memeing about it before, but this is really getting ridiculous. Now Grogus has a Banshee's Veil. <laughs> four Banshee's Veils. Is the we item have... overpowered? Think no, the emoji. It's 40 but here's here we go. Up. We do have the fight has erupted. Dullahan flashes around the other end, but Swipeboard flashes in to give him the what? wild growth, and they're both gonna die. What? Brothers, Fat Man, and Small Twink in arms. I don't know what the hell Lulu is, and that's gonna be Nautilus going down as well. At some point, Caitlyn died. We got four members dead for on. By the way, build the wall, whatever their name is, and now. The members that are still alive with Thunderbirds, which is all of them, are headed towards Baron. Would you believe it? I, I wouldn't, but I just saw it. <laughs> this is uh, this is definitely turning into a bit of a fiesta game. Uh, the Gragas flash from the outside of the Dragon Pit inside the Dragon Pit probably wasn't the smartest decision. Yeah, that bronzed me out of. I was no way I was going to recover from that after seeing it. Ari. Uh, just losing all her HP before anything starts. Well, see, she lost again. her Banshee's Veil, and that means that blue team will slay her and Baron Nasher. 13 kills to 5. Almost 10k gold up already. And that will be... Probably seal the deal on this this first and a half game in this Best of 5 series. You know what I think they should do for playoffs? They uh, should, uh... Have sponsors? That too. They should do the, uh... The Chinese playoff kind of stuff. The, in the Chinese playoffs, the higher seed, they they get an extra game. They, get they start extra. off with one win. Oh, you're just saying that because you don't want to cast these fiestas, you silly goose. No, 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 no. Okay, now, now hear me out, okay? Now, if we buy a Banshee's Veil for the playoffs, <laughs> like the entire thing, we get to block one clown fiesta every 40 seconds. Wow, every 40 seconds? Do you know how long these clown fiestas take? I mean, the last one oh. was 50 minutes, and it didn't even count. Oh. <laughs> we spent 50 is minutes this, of our lives. Is this, is, this going to become, is this going to become our version of the Tainted Minds thing that Riot has to deal with? <laughs> what do you mean? How is this related to Tainted Minds? Infinite well, Rampage is asking you that question right now. How is this related to Tainted Minds? As Nautilus is going to spend three men with the knockup, and cast. the two men cast from Gragas. Uh, well, actually, Nautilus is back in the fight, but Cracked Apple, don't, taking pretty low there, actually. Well, still has the Mantra shields, uh, well, have the Mantra in a, in a bit, but has the shields in the meantime. Uh, well, not really much came of that, actually, just a lot of cooldowns. Actually, everything but Spirit Rush from 
by the way. I don't think they realize why they bought these banshees. They just bought them. Well, they're broken, dude. Well, I, I guess Wait. it kind of makes sense. Maybe, all right. And maybe I'm approaching this the wrong way. They're not buying it because of their passive. They're buying it because of the stats. The passive just happens to be there. Well, the oh, red carpet's diving. rolled out here, and now JLC Plays has knocked up the Nautilus and the Gragas, the two tankier members of the team. But oddly enough, the oh, Lulu's got oh. the one who's go going down first. Spirit Rush coming out. Coming up clutch there. Azir is the plunky uh, managing to answer a kill back down as Kekel takes one last tower shot to seal the deal. That's going to be a two for three. Still in favor of Thunderbirds after that little Fiesta Tower, but Baron Empowered Minions, JLC plays really should just try and walk up here onto this turret, but it looks like uh, Cracked Apple is going to walk up here onto these traps. Loves those cupcakes. Just can't get enough of them. Kind of like yeah, Gragas. Right. She needs to go on a diet, you know? All right, we'll just pretend like the Banshees doesn't have a passive, and they bought it for the stats. Stats-wise, I guess it's pretty decent. I don't remember if the price change changed at all, but I guess 70 AP, 45 MR, that's pretty good. CDR, yeah, all right. You could justify it, maybe. But uh, I still don't like it. I think they're, they're a better buy. They're definitely not utilizing the passive part of it. They're think, definitely not. I think Gragas probably could stand to just get an Abyssal Scepter, maybe. Make him a little tankier. That's been changed. Give his Ari more card, damage. Right? Give his Nautilus more damage. Yeah. Give his Lulu more damage. Yeah, you know, that would be pretty good. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. This is, he's building full AP, or full MR. He's now building a Spectre's Cal for what I can only assume to be an Abyssal or a, uh, Spear Visage, but either way, I'm gonna be pissed off if he builds it. Cause... Well, Spear Visage, he does have an, uh, some natural healing in his kit. But... Right, but if he was planning the Spear Visage, there's no point getting the Banshees. He's obviously not utilizing it for the passive, and I mean, two AP items, man. You're the tank. You're the front line. I don't think your team appreciates you getting melted by the double zeal Lucian that's, for whatever reason, coming out. Well, he does have two zeal items. You are correct. And he also has a Black Cleaver. He managed to pick, finish that third, so... I mean, at the very least, it doesn't really matter the order of your items as, as long as you all get them all in the end, right? And I think that's the... Right. <laughs> that's the... Right, he's thinking the big game. picture. What, uh, <laughs> that is online it, knows that this is a Fiesta. 50 minutes we, we can, in, he'll have his build. Yeah, we can talk about also, I guess, the, the late game, the sixth item, which was the original goal. Uh-oh. Another fight, maybe? Maybe. Spirit Rush was used off They're of that fight. They're walking right next to each uh, other. <laughs> this is the second time that's happened. And Infinite Rampage once again missing that... That... <laughs> or Anchor Toss, whatever it is. What and is going on with this camera? I don't know, but what is going on with Plunky? Uh, taking pretty low there. Zapped by the right. gun blade. So yeah, we can we can actually talk about what these team comps, uh, as a little reminder, what these team comps were originally made to do. We want that late game, right? Oh, <laughs> That six item, Caitlyn. You want the six item Caitlyn with the Lulu, the Gragas, the Nautilus, kind of keeping her protected. Of course, the Lulu ulti, th level three ulti is really strong. Six item Kate. That's the kind of power spike you want to wait for. Once you get to that point, uh, this team comp is basically unstoppable. Rumble kind of falls off by that point. Doesn't necessarily have a lot of item choices to really make himself effective. He's he's best in the mid game. The LeBlanc, of course, becomes a little less effective. She has to deal with a lot. What, that Banshees might actually come in handy, of course, later on in the game, because uh, LeBlanc has to put herself into a, a a medium amount of danger, right, every time she goes for a combo, using her W offensively. Yeah, absolutely. I actually uh, think the, the Banshees there is, is fairly justified, yeah. since it puts it's a, a little bit of an extra barrier between her and some right, oncoming right. crowd control or damaging spell. And, and when and you have further, the charm course. and you have the traps and you have the polymorph, there's all these things that can stop you. Even exhaust, I think, is absorbed if it's the first spell used, which is unlikely. But And of course we have the Rek'Sai also. Rek'Sai, not a very good six-item champion. She has that uh, Umburo, but because the Umburo does have, in fact, a, like a, uh, a champion-wise cooldown where you can only knock up each champion once within a certain amount of time, not very good for those extended level 18 fights. So overall, the composition... Uh, a chase going on here. Uh, Composition-wise, the longer this game lasts, the better it is for Build the Wall. Caitlyn finally has her third item complete. I'm interested to see what that Lucian decides to build uh, with that second Zeal item. It's... Definitely different. It's not what you'd expect from the average Lucian build. He went Phantom Dancer second, uh, Black Cleaver third. Well, he's certainly he's... attacking very fast. 
Right. And uh, considering this Nautilus only has one armor item, this Grogus definitely built a lot of early AP, building a Spear Visage now. Uh, it makes sense. You can actually deal a ton of damage without needing a penetration or anything like that. You can you can make it work. But it'll be interesting to see how much longer that lasts. Going double zeal like that, that does not do well for your scaling. So assuming there's not many more armor items picked up. Uh oh, whoa. How did Brandon get all the way push. up there? He's actually Nobody's doing going a, for it. He's doing a very considerable amount of damage. This is the, what they're leveraging for a Baron tower. Dance now. Caitlyn dropped incredibly oh low. God. A flash coming out from Kekel. The chain's not good enough, but the W is up. Maybe just use the Ignite. No, throws the Q. Is going to W back to the Distortion. Falling back there, but that will be intercepted by Delahan's Body Slam. And they trade Caitlyn for the LeBlanc. Oh but, however, they God. have gotten so much damage onto this Baron in the meantime that it doesn't look like Build the Wall can even get close to it before it goes down. Blue team has slain Baron Nasher. And Brando Calrissian was able to snipe that tower in front in bottom lane as well. So that very was very smart. Yeah. I like that. A lot of plays happening at the same time. You've got the LeBlanc keeping the entire team busy. Everyone's watching. Oh, is this Caitlyn going down? This Caitlyn's in the middle of dealing with this LeBlanc. We have to peel back, help our ADC, right? This composition has been kind of built around this six-item Caitlyn. You want to help her, keep her alive. At the same time, you have Rumble, seeing that nobody's coming to push with him. Since his team's posturing on the Baron, he can, he's free to take the bottom tower. Uh, and and with all that happening, finally, they decide to pull the trigger and go for the, the, the pit they know does not have vision in it. With that pink ward sweep with the sweeper from the uh, <laughs> with the sweeper from the red trinket, really good, really good overall decision. Man managing to make multiple things happen at the same time. Dead Caitlyn, making her burn her flash on top of everything else. Taking a baron, taking an inhib tower. All of a sudden, this this game has been swung wide open. Not just a gold lead anymore. This is a very visible lead. Yeah, definitely. And, it, you know, there is something to be said for how how important is a flash on the AD carry compared to the mid laner. LeBlanc is a lot more mobile than the Kate. The, uh, the net is there for sure for a self-escape, but LeBlanc can W forward, can double W, can go back to either of her Ws. She doesn't need the yeah. the flash as much to get around the map, whereas Caitlyn definitely needs to get it out uh, of you bad the situation. You make the banner on the top of the scoreboard. The what? The banner at the top of the scoreboard for the stream. I didn't make it. Would you be able to change it? Uh, probably. Why? You just had a queue between League and Finals. Team uh oh, team fight. Oh, I see. Well, I will do that in just a moment. It's definitely not the Finals. Haha. -ha. Uh -huh. <laughs> well... This looks like Dullahan will be taking a pretty significant chunk of damage from the Rumble. Forcing out the Explosive Cask is pretty big. That's how they deny the Siege from Thunderbirds here. Uh -oh. Evolution now caught is going to be forced to flash out there and use heal. Flash might have been a little unnecessary, but now there's no mana on the Nautilus. And they know that, so they're going to be looking to try and pinch this uh, mid lane turret. Oh, they're forcing Equalizer the tower. comes down. That means Plunky's dropped incredibly low. Gonna Spirit Rush out of there. Even though, through that, though, will fall as now the Zanyas. Brando Calrissian is staying alive for now, but Delahan not able to finalize that kill. So much going on underneath this turret. And with the shield and the Kekel absorbing that Caitlyn ultimate, that means that Ace in the Hole is not going to be enough. JLC plays is going to make it out there. They trade a 3-4-1. Only Dud is online going down for, after that. And the tower... We'll be next in line now. Very nicely positioned tower dive there. Managing going to get three people in the equalizer early on, immediately with the Rek'Sai and the Rumble flanking from the side. That's the kind of thing that happens when you try to defend these tier two towers. You're open to a lot of uh, surprise engages from around the corner in the tier twos. That's what it seems like. Now we are on to the inhibitor here, Thunderbirds. Pressuring even further with only three members right now. Rek'Sai pushing up the bottom lane, which has no tower to defend its inhibitor. Now we've got two open exposed inhibitors on the side of... I keep saying by the way because BDW. <laughs> on the side of Build the Wall. Now what are Thunderbirds going to go for next? Elder Drake is up. No Baron yet. 
But they have pressure in bottom lane, they have pressure in mid lane, and bottom lane pushing towards them. What do they do? Well, uh, one thing I'd like to see is, considering the split pushers for uh, Thunderbirds are in fact both magic damage, of course we have the Gunblade, LeBlanc, we have the Rumble that has been split pushing bottom lane, gotten a lot done there. Uh, I would have liked to see a Banner of Command built by the Nautilus, maybe the Gragas. Have them kind of deal with it, send something to... Uh, because right now, what Build the Wall needs to come back into this game is they need to have a lane shoved out and they need to start delaying. They have the long range from the Caitlyn. They have the potential uh, displacement, and they also have the appeal that they can throw out too. They have Ari being able to get away with the ulti, the Lulu ulti, right? The Nautilus ulti, the Gragas ulti. So they need to play the waiting game. They need to have a lane shoving that a solo lane cannot just simply come out and meet. I mean, we know they don't have the teleport on the Rumble. They should just start forcing a side lane, have somebody meet it, and then force the five before. Seems like a sound plan. Whether or not they consider or even execute it is another story, as they are now looking uh, by build the wall, are now 13 and a half thousand gold down. They have a word on this Elder Drake. They know it's happening. But yeah, they didn't what, think it. What can they do now? Let's see, they are moving forward onto it. Elder Drake under 6,000 health, but the rest of the team is here. Spirit rushing over is Azir, is a Plunky. Now knocked up by the... JLC plays as Rek'Sai, but it was a very good intercept play coming out from the Gragas to kill Dud is online's Lucian on the backside. There comes the Equalizer. Yeah, there's the Equalizer as well. That means a double kill for oh, Elder stolen. Jekyll. Elder is stolen by Delahan. The second time he's stolen a Drake, and it's the big one that matters. Gragas it's going down lot. on the back of that. A triple kill for Keckles LeBlanc. C9 Ray still doing so much damage. Now exhausted, forced to flash. Keckles throwing down the chain onto the Nautilus. But that means that now the team will be split, or will it? Infinite Rampage trying to get out of here. JLC plays knocking up the Caitlyn, but it's not enough to kill her. She's left with very little HP, and now JLC plays reviving. Kekko will look to get the fourth kill of the fight. JLC plays securing it. Nautilus going down. That's a five for two in favor of Thunderbirds once again. But they do lose the Elder Drake, and they're not able to kill every single member. Caitlyn still has it. For what it's worth, it's just a double uh, double Infernal, which is still pretty strong, especially on your core member, your, your core damage dealer there. They would, have, they would have been able to finish sneaking it if they had placed a Control Ward, but this is a problem I talked about in the game before. When you don't have a... Uh, for example, you see right there, you see the Ruby Sidestone instead of the uh, Eye of the Watchers for the Karma, right? Uh, now, you can get away with the Ruby Sidestone, and I especially like it later on in the game, right? The the Ruby Sightstone has the added effect of reducing the cooldown for all your other active items. Which, of course, when you're building two, three active items, really helpful. But at the same time, do you really need that, that Frost Queen's claim at this point? I mean, the, the slow is kind of negligible at this point. Of course, right, you complete the quest, that's a new item thing, but you're, you're never really needing to get the burst of movement speed you'd be getting from that quest. And... That slot might have been better filled by having something to put control wards in. And with not having a control ward, it basically guarantees that there might still be a ward inside the dragon pit while they're doing it. They wound up getting it still in a way when they could have closed this game out. Definitely. Rek'Sai actually had a slot occupied only by a ruby crystal. 150 right. health in favor of a control ward that gives you that Elder Drake and... Ideally, uh, a better, you know, sort of p posture somewhere on the map. Now, this time, Kekel is going to be caught by the Nautilus, but not a lot of damage coming out from that. <laughs> Interesting uh, uh, play there, knocking the Nautilus back uh, towards Dud is online, but he's up incredibly low. That's a flash coming out of him, but it's not going to be enough. Kekel unstoppable now on the LeBlanc. As now the significant amount of damage taken down by Brando. Keckle going forward, trying to get a second kill. We'll secure it onto the Ari. Zero is a plunky going down there. Now it's just three members. The bottom lane in the jungle. Four. Build the wall. Trying to defend against five members of Thunderbirds. A flash on Barrow from the Rek'Sai. Is it enough? Six items, Caitlyn. Uh, was... Not quite. And that will be going down on the backside of this fight. 
Delahan going down next. A double kill again for this LeBlanc. 14, 4, and 9 is Kekel going absolutely off in this match. And with only the Lulu around and 20 seconds on the Nautilus, this looks like it's going to be game one for Thunderbirds. Well, maybe game one. Um. <laughs> well, that was interesting. Interesting indeed. Yeah, and I, Thunderbirds I like, are I, interested in the win that they just got. So yeah, good. I like I like the I like the attempt. Uh, there was definitely an attempt to come back after they were very far behind. Very far behind. Dullahan made a lot of good hero plays to potentially make bring the team back, but in the end, it just wasn't enough. The gold lead was insurmountable, and I have to say, Keck was a blunk. The way he zoned out carries, the way he could literally kill half the team by himself and maybe even get out. Just, he did his his role. He he really became the LeBlanc, the disruptor, the uh, the deceptionist. Because uh, that, that play right before the Baron call, managing to not only assassinate the Caitlyn, but bring the rest of the team forward, along with uh, Brando's split pushing in the bottom lane, that was very smart play. That was the kind of play where you're basically influencing how the rest of the enemy team reacts and by doing that by basically splitting off the team to decide between bot lane baron or adc that was the call that basically put the final nail in the coffin for build the wall and uh, it was it was perfectly executed it was something that you can definitely see comes from definitive shot calling uh, overall i definitely like the movements the rotations the shot calls that happened this game for uh, thunderbirds very well played. So it seems. Now with one win on the board for Thunderbirds. And we'll get back to everybody on the verdict on game one. I'm sure the admins have reached one now. We're going to go check with that. And in the meantime, I'll put the music back on for you guys. And we will be back when the teams and the casters and the admins are all set to go for game three or two between these two teams. Thanks for joining us.